Okay, now the missus has gone out for a couple of hours, so what I've done, I've put the camcorder on a tripod and I want to talk to you about home cinema installation. I'm going to show you my own home cinema setup where I've incorporated a projector and a large screen into a normal size lounge, the kind that you get in any house in England, without disrupting the whole place, without knocking down any walls or replastering any of that kind of business, and the whole thing could be hidden away when it's not required. In doing this, I'll show you some of the pitfalls that you might come across and some of the things that you have to kind of plan around when you're doing it. Uh, and also how to do it as, as cheaply as possible. Now the thing that made me realise that I could actually have a home cinema was when I saw my first uh, DLP 720p projector that was under £500. At the time, about a year ago, it was this, it was a Sharp XVZ 3000 and I think £500 was kind of a mental bracket for me so when I saw this at £489 in a sale I picked it up immediately. Now if you go and look online nowadays you can probably go and get yourself an Optoma HD 700X for £399 and that's an absolute steal. Before you even start thinking about a projector you'll need to have at least an AV setup like an AV amplifier and speakers because you need somewhere for the sound to come out of when the television's switched off. And then on top of that of course you'll need some kind of uh, HD video source, in this case a PlayStation 3 for Blu-rays and a Sky HD box for live television because if you're going to blow up images to 100 inches you need to start with at least an HD source otherwise it just won't look very good. Right now the most difficult thing for me to figure out was how you get your video to the projector here from your AV equipment that's over here. Okay, now you're going to be sending your video around the room uh, through wires. You've got to decide what kind of video you're sending. It's going to be HD video, of course, but is it going to be components or is it going to be HDMI? Well, I went with components and I'll explain why. Okay, it all comes down to costs again, of course. Uh, the Sky HD box that I've already got outputs in 1080i uh, through component and through HDMI. So it's really easy for me just to send the HDMI up to the television and send the components off to the projector. OK, now believe it or not, this little unassuming silver box, shiny bow component video switcher is the most important part of the whole setup. Now, as it can take four inputs, four component inputs from different pieces of equipment and send them off to two different places. So, for example, I can have uh, input number two go to the television and input number four go to the projector. OK, so all these video items just go into four component leads which then go into the back of the video switch box. And from the video switch box, just one lead works its way around the room to the projector, making things an awful lot simpler. Now I'm routing all the video around the room using this, which is Cat5 network cable. In fact, this is Cat5E. Um, now normally you wouldn't route video through network cable, however there's a way of doing this and there's a couple of reasons behind it. Number one, uh, it's pence per metre, it's probably about 79p a metre. It's an awful lot thinner and therefore you can put it through a drilled hole uh, rather unobtrusively. It can go down the side of a piece of carpet. Now this is Cat 5E which means it comes with this metal shielding uh, which stops it getting electrical interference from other items in the room. So uh, the network cable goes from the video switch box into the uh, around the room and then into the pr projector. Now of course you crimp on a normal network connector on the end here, Oop, going out of focus, uh, and then that just goes inside the ballon, as this device is called, and that's a ballon there. Uh, ballon, it doesn't use any power, it just converts those wires into the normal component wires. And therefore I've got this wire that goes all the way around the outside of the room uh, around the corner and into the back of the video switch box at which point there's another ballon. Right so here's the screen this is a 169 pano view manually operated screen uh, you pull it down using the handle in the middle there just like the ones you used to see in school or whatever um, it is held by these hooks at either end and that's it. Now this is a pretty heavy thing so you need to make sure that those hooks are well secured to the ceiling Right, so I need to secure these hooks into this ceiling. Uh, you can't just put them through the plasterboard. I thought about those things where you put a hook through and it kind of pops out and pulls itself down. Unfortunately, plasterboard will not be solid enough to hold this, uh, the weight of this. Pulling it up and down adds extra strain on it, so you're going to bring the whole roof down. Not a good idea. So what you need to do, you actually need to put it into one of the um, cross beams. So what I did, I got all sorts of kind of testing devices that were supposed to beat when it, when it hit a beam. They didn't work for me, I just did it by listening, and then what I did then, I got a very fine drill uh, and drilled, I mean this sounds like a bad idea, but trust me, I drilled through uh, lots of little tiny holes that you won't be able to see, or at least the missus won't be able to see, until, I got, until it got stuck and you could tell it was in the middle of a beam. 
filled in the other little holes with tiny little bits of filler and left the hole that I, that I wanted and then drilled up into that one. And then here's what I put into the hole. I then put these things in it. Now this is an eye loop. Uh, this is screwed in uh, and it's uh, metal. I then painted it white so that it matched the ceiling. And then into that, when I put the screen up, I hang these things. These are called S-hooks, uh, usually used in kitchens for hanging up knives and things. Okay, so you're in the house, it's Saturday night, it's movie night, you've got a new Blu-ray you want to watch, you get the projector out, you put it on its stand, you clip the network cable in the back of it. Next thing, put the screen up. Get the little S-hook, put it in the loop, and hang the screen. That's all there is to it. Now one very careful bit of planning here is getting the speaker stands and the speakers at the right level. The sound has to go out below the screen, uh, which is what they're doing here. If the screen was to cover them, unfortunately the sound would get muffled. A big priority for me when setting this up was having the whole thing hide away when it wasn't in use. So inside this lounge table, if I just slide the candle to one side, that's where the projector lives. So all I need to do is grab that out of there and put it on this bar stool, point it at the screen. Now you're probably thinking that's not the most beautiful or elegant solution and you're absolutely right, however it's cheap and when the projector's on top of the stool you're not looking at either of those two things, the lights are off and you're looking at the screen. Now I sit a pretty normal distance away from this screen, as I said it's a 96 inch screen and I sit in my chair over here. Okay, so uh, I'll set my stall out. The reason I've gone 720p DLP is because in your average size room like this one, uh, it's perfectly adequate. Now, uh, if you want to go 1080p and spend all that money, you can do. However, I'd really recommend that only if you're going to do a proper home cinema setup and not on where you go and stick your projector on a bar stool every weekend. Also, 720p DLP produces a nice bright image. And in a room like your average UK lounge, it's not often that you can black it out completely. Now having a universal remote control is by no means essential, however it's really rather desirable and makes the whole thing an awful lot more easy and user friendly. And with just one key press you can operate four or five different pieces of equipment off just the one remote. Maybe you even want to add in the odd luxury like remote control lounge lighting. Believe it or not it's just a really cheap and simple modification of replacing your existing light switch with a remote control dimmer switch. Okay, it's four in the afternoon, we've got the projector set up, we've put it on, a, on its stool, we've plugged the wires in the back, we've got the uh, screen set up, took about five minutes in total, and this is what you get. Uh, now, just for scale purposes, I'll show you, this is what a 100 inch screen looks like in a lounge. Uh, I can't quite touch the corners, but you can see, I hope you can see me in the middle there somewhere. Now, uh, underneath here is the 46 inch Samsung television, and that's what that looks like. Um, as you can see, if I pull it down a little bit more, you can certainly see which gives you more bang for your buck. You've got a £500 projector and a £100 screen, or a £1,000 Samsung television. I know which one I'd rather watch movies on. OK, well, there's not much more from me now other than to say, remember, it's not about what it looks like when it's off, it's what it looks like when it's on that matters. And when your lounge lights are down and you're sat in your comfy chair in your own house watching a 100-inch screen with the latest Blu-ray on, there really is nothing else that compares. So uh, all I'd say is I hope this encourages a couple of people to give it a go in their own houses, uh, but for the moment I'm just going to sign off and I'm going to go and watch some more films. Thanks very much.